Hi, Hello. I'm drawn this in the I just want to kind of go and load this in the car. And I do my green bear with those cheat. I'm from the uh, James Bay area, a little place called Fort Albany. That's where I was born. I live in here in Schumacher now. Sometimes to make myself feel at home, I call it uh, Schumacher First Nations. It makes me feel good. And today we're going to learn, I'm going to show you how uh, a tamarack bird is made. I know so my abitagi shigaga, I guess I know what to know. And I do chigate gyo shigaga no deskekan. Waganaga gaba chaga no chig. So as I go, I'll tell some stories how this came about. In the olden days, the um, decoys were made out of uh, tamarack, some were made out of wood. Some of, some of them used to can make them out of uh, uh, branches using uh, just trees, or even the top of a tree. You can uh, cut those and then just make a, a head for them. But this one <clears throat> we're going to show you is more of um, the one used for uh, uh, so you can have it displayed at your house. We I was going to talk about the story of 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 the Some of the tools that you need to make um, a tamarack bird, first of all, is you need the scissors, then you need the uh, cutters for cutting the branches. You need a small cutter for uh, working on the head and the neck. And of course, you need uh, the knife. Then you need a crooked needle and you also need a straight needle. Sometimes you need this one too. This is the band aid. This is the uh, survival tool. If you cut yourself, you need this. You also need this uh, sinew for tying up the bird. And of course, you need the, um, the thread. And also, this is a cheesecloth that you can use to make the body. So just before we start, I'll put these uh, little tools away for now. We'll just put them over here. <clears throat> A long time ago, when the people used to use arrows to go hunting before the arrival of gun, they still had decoys. So when they were hunting, you would place your decoys against the wind. be like this. This decoys would be facing the wind. Then you would have your blind over here. So when the geese come, when you call them coming in, then they usually come this way. And then in order to land, they have to go on top of you. And then they land over here. So this is where they used to kill them using their uh, bow and arrows right here. But of course, nowadays, when they fly over, you can just shoot them as, t as they come in. But you have to be a good uh, caller. You put it down like this. <clears throat> the, one of the other teachings about the uh, Takana that goes to the Mashkego Cree people is that uh, we consider the bird uh, very sacred. When they come back in the springtime, it's considered the uh, reincarnation of life because they come and give their life to us so we can sustain, we can live, and they have to be respected. Because when, when the Creator made everything, then, then He saw everything, He said, good, very good, He said. So we have to respect the goodness that we see in all creation. You have to hold it tight when you're making the body. Then you have another thread that's a little bit, uh, it's not not very strong, it's very light that you can use. So you go like this, and we do this, wind them. Just take your time, you go like that, making the body. That's one thing you have to watch too when you're buying a tamarack bird, is sometimes you ask what's inside. And it's good to, to know what's inside, so when you wet it, to get the uh, fresh, the freshness of the tamarack birds. 
And then you're gonna have a nice smell in the house. So you keep, keep going like this one, I'll do what you get to. And one man, me, oh man, this is the body now. Okay. So we're gonna start using the uh, tamarack twigs now. Those ones were already picked. I already picked them. If they're dry, you wet them. I pack all good and you put on no, I can shake them in the upper stano. I got, I got them at all the money. We put the, uh, the pack way banoa. We got you a shirt, they are pages. For my boy, I stand on all my sort. So if you don't wet your tamarack uh, twigs when they're, when they're dry, they're just going to break when you start to, uh, to make the, the bird, especially when you're tying it. So you have to make sure they're nice and, uh, and wet, especially if they've been sitting around for, for a while. So you just keep uh, putting them down like this. You gotta make sure you plug the holes as you see them, short ones. Keep going like this. I want to check out it. Oh my God, que no se chico go. Me coja mis pies está no aquí o más. Con este abad se chico go que no se chico. Going at the long ones, you got to put them in there because this is going to be your uh, the neck, and that's why you need those uh, extra long ones. It's hard to uh, make birds in the summertime because um, that's when the uh, the tamaracks are really uh, they're gummy. The best time to pick branches in the fall. But you can still do it in the summertime, but it's uh, more hard work because you have to face the uh, the mosquitoes, you know. They keep biting, they don't care how they bite. They just bite you all over the place. But in the fall, it's much easier because you don't have to uh, worry about mosquitoes. So usually if you want to make sure that you're going to cover the whole body, you just put your hand like this and you come down like that just to measure. You know, so that should cover it right now. So you put it in the middle, like that. And then you grab in here, and quickly you go like this. See? And then you tie it up like that. Then after you tie it up, then you straight the branches, make sure you cover the body inside. Like that. Make sure you cover it good. And straighten some of them out while you're doing this. Then after you finish that, then you go like that. Sometimes you just push them in there if they pop out, so you can fix them easy. When the is coming on me, that's what I want to do. When do you get to? Again, you get them good. Then you go ask. The table now goes at there. So it'll be nice and equal. Or like that.
And you hold it like that. Talk about that. Not too hard. You might break the branches if you pull too hard. They want to check out there, huh? I shall manage to cut it this now. So, I'm out there. You cut the tail end using. You, you cut it. That's what you have now. And the next thing you do, now what we're going to do is we're going to tie the uh, the ends now. So you need a uh, sinew for that. Okay. okay. This is where you start using your crooked needle. Then you go in between here, like that. Like that. Tie a little knot here, like that. Then, like this, and this is where the uh, this thumb comes in for your uh, fingers. You don't cut yourself when you pull. When you remove this, so this way this. Uh, when you tie, it doesn't slip out because you're going to be doing the same way with the with with the head, with the neck. So, so that's how you do it, Omar. Starting to shape up now. After you put it down for a while, you drink a cup of tea. You know, you you drink a cup of tea, and you look at your creation, enjoying it. Because when you make something for people, when they ask you to make a bird, you usually you make it to the best because whatever you're making, you're putting your love <clears throat> in that bird to give it to your friend, whoever wants it. And you always have to carry that message, no matter what kind of work you do. You have to carry that love for, uh, for people that we meet. Okay, next thing we'll do, you want to get the kaske glass here? So we're going to start sewing now the body. But you have to put it upside down this way, like that. Like this. Because you tied it good here. So it doesn't come loose. And then go like this once again. Go inside this line here. So this way now, there's no way your thread could come loose. And this is where you need your uh, straight needle. Oh my gosh, it's the other one. The tap it toes it take a squat it. So the body is going to be equal. That's why you're putting that needle in there. It gives you guidance so you can uh, make the thread really look good. So you keep going like this. Don't pull too hard. They catch you. Okay, no, he knows you better than anyone. I'll be able to get that way out. And they go at the corner. Be able to get it. So you just take your time with the tricks so you don't, uh, you don't break them. Because if you break them, then you have to uh, put extra work to it to, to repair it. As I can know what you better than anyone. Mabu, when the boy to check out 
take your time. You move about an inch, and you go like that again, and then you start over. You just repeat what you did. <coughs> This Sakana uh, that goes is a very smart bird. One of the reasons why they go and nest in the far north is that the sun doesn't go down. And also, they keep the one eye open. They only uh, sleep with one eye and they take turns. And that's how they protect their young people, not their young people, their little ones from being attacked by uh, foxes or wolves or anything that uh, that's going to hurt them. And the other thing is the way they fly, the formation, the V formation again, that was given by their creator to fly like that so they can take turns and be able to uh, not get tired out. And also the way they communicate with each other. It's really interesting the way birds communicate with each other. You know, a long time ago, the story is that um, people used to talk to animals a long time ago, even birds. And the term the man used when he was talking to animals were jij, meaning my brother, my little brother. That's how animals and birds, whatever, were uh, addressed with the word jij, meaning little brother. That's why we have so many legends in our uh, tradition that uh, that we share with other people, with young people. And that's how you learn about life at the same time, by the teachings of the elders and also by animals' behavior. <laughs> So you have to show respect to, uh, to any kind of animal because they're your brothers. So you just keep going like this until you come to the end. When double my to you to. you. You don't pull too hard so you don't uh, break any uh, branches. So you go like this. Then after the last one, then you come to the neck area. You have to tie it in here so. I got you. And you go like this. So that's what we have now. You see all these uh, lines because of the needle we use? See, everything is nice, divided up nicely. See that? See, so you make it look like that now. Again, you have to always go slow, the way in the middle. Take your time. So you like that. And after, get your needle. Like that. And then you come on the inside. Like that. Then 
Then you take your needle out, make a little knot here so it doesn't slip out. When you're finished, make about two of them. And again, you show. Okay. Taco Pichigarte Gurta. And then you score a Gishagan on it. The tail end. Well, to Chigatino, Mad Chigate Bugues with the wind up. Make sure you don't cut your thread in here. Because if you do, then you're in trouble. You got to start over again. So you just go like that slowly. It's always good to sharpen your knife too. So you just go like that. Usually you can cut it the way you want to cut the tail in. Some people cut it flat like this and flat this way again, just the way the real uh, Canada goose looks like. We should now go ahead to go to the step of the step of the Romanino in Nova Bundesna Roma. So, I guess I can. The Romago Mescata. So, with the legs, you look at the bird, you want to make them make stand good, so you put one, one leg here, and then you put the other one here. Like that. Then you use your big cutter, cut the leg. Like that. Then you put the middle one in here. Again, you cut it. Like that. And, and there's your bird, see? There's your bird. You can make the head, if you want to turn it the other way, you can. Or you can make it look straight, or you can turn it to make it look back, whatever. When you twisting the head, the neck, that's when you shape the, the head the way you want to make it. You always respect even your tamarack geese when you make them because uh, when we used to go hunting, you have your blind and you have your decoys. You put them inside the blind before you leave. That's how they were respected because you just don't uh, leave them alone. You put them away after. So, I want to thank you all for watching. We in great segi kanam yege us ha gonis ke skanis. Yena asko mete na ame se jemino pani yegnes tegi no. Hope the best for all of you. Miigwech.